in this type of gown, you won't cut the front and the back together. Reason being that there's a slit in front. Okay. So, we'll mark out the length of the gown first. Remember, we have a borderline here, which is, is at the edge, which is going to be one inch. So we cut out, the length of the gown is 60, plus that one inch butter, that is 61. Front and back will be the same thing, the same length, exactly the same length. Okay, from here, okay, to here will be the same length for front and back. Okay, but from here to here won't be the same. Reason being that we have to give there's a slit in front, so we have to give allowance for that slit in front. Okay, okay, work on the back first. Okay, I told us that when we want to start anything marking on our on our, on our material, you should always have a border to guide our one inch, one inch. have inserted our border now from the picture we can see above the wideness of this is the back we want to work on first right now the wideness of the wideness of the neck this way is four inches now this way if you can now for the back is always one inches because the back will not go down The back you can make it one inch or one and a half inch anyhow you want it to be so i measured the person 22 here i want it to be 22. okay i want it to be 22 you can make it more than that if you want the hand to be more than 22 that is where this picture is then that means you are going to be joining another ankara down by this side you join ankara by this side but from the picture 22 is okay for this my customer so I mark 22 on that our borderline. We go down by one and a half inch. This is because remember I always told you that our shoulder is not straight. So you go down by one and a half inch to create that slant. Now I measure one and a half inch here. Then I connect it to this shoulder where I did. I connect it to this our shoulder okay four inches which i measured the wideness four inches now on that same sleeve area i will come down by take him down by 10 inch or let's say 10 and a half inch okay i came down by 10 and a half inch came down by 12 inches now put it somewhere around here again just to get that exact 12 inches okay i want to be bringing slanting this thing bringing this line in that's why i need a correct so that there won't be shift in any of the this thing okay in any of the measurements now from this line you put here i'm coming down coming in by four inches which is somewhere around here You connect this inch, this line. You see why I measure this two of here? So that this line will not be slanting. Okay. Next measurement that we will be needing. If you look at that picture, keep line. Okay. We need to ascertain where this person's hip is. And this person's hip line is 26. Okay. Six. 
why I'm marking 26 now is to ascertain where that cow design will end. If you look at that style properly, you will see that the cow design came down a little below the below the um, hips. Okay, so I want to say mine should come down by seven inch. Bring it down by seven inches. Okay, on that seven inches, this is the hip line. Bring it down by seven inches. You now measure your hip line, the person's hip line. Now the person's hip hip line for me is. 46 divided by 4 you will get 11 and a half then you add 2 inches allowance to it you will get 13 and a half so that 13 and a half you will place the measurement here place the measurement taking down remember that the cow design did not go down okay the cow design did not go down so you are going to that means this place is straight this place is straight 13 and a half this place is straight at this place we came in by four inches okay remember that this place we came in by four inches I don't hear so you develop CO, CO, I develop <laughs> uh, <laughs> take it down to this line okay but I would have said I will bring it in here we, come, we, we, we came in by 4 inch. Now, this is where we start creating our cow design. But we can't make it straight down like this. So you have to curve it out. Okay? Curve it out. Curve it out. Take it like this way. Now, on getting here, if you want to do it like this, to get here, it will be sharp. So, because we don't want to is the back of this. Done cutting out the back, so we set the we set it aside. We are going to be adding slits to the front. Now we are going to use something to bend that slit. Okay, so for that reason, we bend it a little by like half inch. If you bend more than half inch, it will affect that cow design here for the front, and we don't want that. So you just bend it a little. I've bent this. This is the seam seam uh, seam allowance. Some people used to just sew it and then just put that slit and use their shoulder to cover it. I won't advise you to do that so that your cloth will be balanced. Remove half inch. I will tell you how to manage it later. Okay. Remove at the half inch. Remove half inch. Yes half inch this is now your front okay this is now your front the back pattern on the front okay place it like so Exactly what we have here now the neck depth will now be six inches or let's make it let's make it six inches Okay, we have joined the ashoke, and when you are drying, you don't sew, you place it on each other, you don't turn it this way to sew, you place it on each other. So now we have joined, we have joined it. It's now for us to use it and cut out the neck of our ankara. Okay, but we have to iron it to be flat. We take our front bodies. Because we have marked the front bodies, so it will be the one that, let it be under. Everything is equal here. Make sure everything is equal. Okay.
Let's put some bodies aside. You can see that one. So eight inches, right? One inch and quarter. One inch and quarter. So from what we can see, hmm, the the Ashoke ended almost around the shoulder area. Okay, he ended almost around the shoulder area. So what we'll do now is to use our ruler and give a very beautiful curve. how how it will look like the next thing you will do because you can either box stitch here or you can either just sew inside the line that half inch we bended look at it here okay we are going to sew to decide where we want to end it okay and where we want to end it okay remember we did not cut the slit this place before cutting our neck we didn't slit this place before so slit it, it will bend the line leave it like that then cut your this thing before you open it if not you will make mistake so now we are going to go and sew on this line to where the ashoke ended that's where the slit is starting from Our gown has formed. Okay. Our gown has formed. Now this is the slit area. Now if you say you want to leave it like this, it becomes a little bit not fine because if the person should open his or her leg this way, or maybe the breeze will blow, the person will be seen here. So we have to cut out material and use material to turn just this place so that nobody will be seeing the back. Because this gown does not really need lining. Except you want to add lining to yours, then you can do that. Okay. This point is just okay for us. So now we are going to be bend going to be bending once uh, the, that is this material we have cut out now. We will now join it here okay so that if the person should open his le her leg or breeze should be able to blow the slit it won't be showing the back of the other ankara so now we are going to be joining this here so since we are going to be joining this side to this side we will now have to bend this now we have to sew this side to hem these same edges we have bent this side so now we are going to take this side to the machine take it to the machine and sew to this side so that by the time we turn it it looks like this okay so let's go to the machine so now we have to iron that slit. Open it up and give it a good press. This was the part we joined just now. Okay. This was the part we joined just now. Okay. You can see. Thread is not supposed to show. So we invest on having gone. We invest on hemming gum because here thread is not supposed to show on your sewing. But for you, for your work to look professional, do not sew on that slit area. You can see how beautiful and neat our slit is looking. You see? So even if the person opens his leg, look at what the person will be seeing. Okay? You can see how beautiful our work is here. Properly. Properly. to get exactly this point okay so we have gotten it and it's right here we'll remove this one
Now you remember our back pattern, right? Our back pattern. We we'll use stay to make the hand stand, the sleeve to stand. Okay? Your work needs. Okay? I used another anchor to turn. We are going to use another strand of anchor to turn it so that our clothes will be neat. Okay? This is one of the sleeves. This is the sleeve. Okay? You can see we made it to stand. You understand? We made it to stand. So if you don't put stay on your the hand of your sleeve, it will just you know be falling anyhow. But if there's stay inside, it will stand well. When I went through my pieces or my properties, I found this trimming. Okay, I found this trimming, and I felt it's better to use this trimming because it made the actual fit to be finer. You join the sides, then bend the uh, the hem side area. That's what turn the hem area. Then I use a uh, bias to turn this neck so that it will be finer. This is our final product. 